Is it going? Yeah. My hands are cold. Here's a story that must be told about two ladies that are kind of old. One's a pastor, the other's not. They like to chat and cook and pray a lot. Oh, chat, cook and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, pray. Lots of laughter and lots of fun. Tuesday's on Facebook Live at 1. You'll never know what will happen when. Lucy and Ethel are at it again. Oh, chat, cook, and pray. Oh, oh, oh chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, pray. Chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, and pray. Oh, 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 chat, cook, pray. Amen. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, we're getting these words down. You didn't huh. see that little, you didn't see that little uh, prompt card. And I want to welcome all of you to today's Chat, Cook, and Pray cooking show. And this is through the wonderful courtesy of Bethel, United Church of Christ, where no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And so today, what we're going to do is ice cream. Now, it took Marty a while to do this. She didn't do it during summer, so she waits till <laughs> it finally gets cold, and we're doing ice cream. And I'll be saying hi to all you people. Kathy Korn, Bill Wooten, Bill Wooten again, Lori Buck, Andrea Burka. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, everybody. Okay, so, and I'm actually going to help her today, so that's kind of exciting. So I'm going to go scary. around. It's scary. scary. exciting. But this is no cook ice cream. And I'm no going to... No churn. Oh, no churn. churn. No cream. churn. No cook ice cream. <laughs> I don't know. That's it. And then I'll come back around and put all the goodies in with you. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is just such a simple, easy recipe. Even Randy could have done it if I'd have trusted him. <laughs> okay. We're going to start out by opening up this can of... of uh, off-brand Eagle Brand milk from Walmart for a dollar and twelve cents. Ah, stuck on my finger. Okay, we're just gonna pour this into this bowl. You don't need the cold bowl yet. Not yet. I've okay. got it by my feet. I'm so excited because she's actually gonna let me do stuff today. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> you know. What can I say? Miracles happen. <laughs> You've been begging and begging, but ever since that time that you did those bananas... I know, I know you never have it. trusted me, but they were good. I don't care what you say. Okay, yeah. so she's getting the Eagle brand milk in yeah. there, or sweet wanna... sweet condensed milk, whatever brand. Yes. Sweet condensed yes. Milk. milk. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This stuff is so good. It makes you want to lick the can out. I mean, I did that at home, but I'm not yeah. going to do it. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Why, you want to do it afterwards when they're not watching? Maybe, when we turn off I the thought, cameras. I thought you might want to. I'll trade <laughs> it. I won't contaminate it. Okay, and now vanilla. And we just put in two teaspoons of vanilla. And here we go. Oh, I Can you guess it's going to be vanilla ice cream? Okay, we've got right. Randy's on. Bill's calling this Ice Cream Tuesday. Ice cream and Dawn Perry is watching. Do you know Dawn Perry? No, oh, I don't think I do. I don't know. It's kind of like Dawn Perry on, <laughs> but it's Dawn Perry. Dawn Perry. Now I'm just going to mix in the uh, the vanilla into this, and the step will be through. And then we go to the hard part next. Which is? <laughs> Doing the whipped cream. Oh, boy. So here's what's going to happen. When she starts that irritating uh, mixer... Uh, I'm standing here close to the microphone to give you some history of these different ingredients or toppings uh, that we're going to put in the different ice cream. Look All at right. that pretty bowl. Yes, yes. I've used a deeper dish bowl because I used a little bit shorter one at home and I made quite a mess. I see, and we don't want to mess up our French cabinets. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to also mess up my tablecloth. All right, I'm going to pour two cups What's that little thing in there? Well, 
this one you can see no matter where level you can see if I turn it the right direction so I can see where one cup is <laughs> and then it tells me yeah where one cup is yeah goes right to the top here yeah and there I am and I don't have to worry okay there's one but I still don't understand what that little green thing is it stuck up in out. there. It has oh. all sorts of measurements on oh, it. Oh, okay. It's another one of my little one things. One of your things. Oh, wow. Look, I look. had just the right amount. Exactly. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. If not, we would have just made it with less. Wow. Yeah. All right. Okay. There. So. That's done. Now, here comes the noise. Okay. And so. we're just going to beat this until it forms soft peaks. Soft peaks. She's beating. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> we better plug in the electricity. Plug in the electricity. Yeah, I don't believe that's very slow. To beat While it. she's plugging in the electricity, and before she starts the noise, and so you all can hear me. Hi, Vicki. Uh, Jamaican grape nut ice cream. We're going to have grape nuts in the ice cream. Remember, we did grape nuts on something else, too. Cookies. Yes, that's another thing I made. Grape nut cookies. With, with, with bacon. Bacon. With bacon, that's yeah, right. That's, that's what saved them with the bacon. No, it was not. Okay, grape nut is also referred to as grain nut. I think I've been called a grain nut before. You've been called a nut. Uh, the grape nuts aren't hard like they are when they come from the box. Well, that makes sense. It's a it's popular in Jamaica, the Canadian Maritimes, Nova Scotia, New England. Who knew? Gifford's Dairy in Maine. Oh, dairy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gifford's Dairy in Maine. <laughs> has been making and selling grape nut ice cream for years. Oh my so, gosh. So I guess I need to plan a trip up north. Funny thing, grape nut cereal contains neither nuts nor grapes. We already knew that because I think I've read that before. It was created by C.W. Post way back in 1897 and it's made of both wheat and barley. The batter was baked into a sheet and then, used a, and then they used a coffee grinder to produce the little kernels. So that's how they become all a little crunchy. They bake it in a sheet and then do it, put it in a coffee grinder. Okay, so here you see the grape nuts that will be put in the ice cream. I'm now going to go to the junior... No. Oh. Junior, can't oh. you read? Well, look how little they are. Don't, These don't are worry. junior mints. I okay. chopped them up. Junior mints are a candy brand consisting of small rounds of mint filling inside dark chocolate with a dimple on one side. The mints are produced by Tootsie Roll Industry, uh, and they're packaged in fun size boxes or much larger 12-ounce boxes. Over 15 million junior mints are produced daily. Can you, can you even imagine that? Junior mints have traveled throughout the world. They are now certified kosher dairy by the Orthodox <laughs> Union. I don't know what that means. In 2009, Tootsie Roll introduced a com companion product called Junior Mints Deluxe a larger dark chocolate covered mint that comes foil wrapped. James O. Welch founded his Cambridge Candy Company in 1927. His partner in the company was his brother, Robert Welch, who retired from the confectionery business in 56. Two years later, founded the John Birch Society. Ugh. Ugh. In 1963, the brand was acquired by Nabisco uh, today, Junior Mints are still manufactured at the Cambridge factory. The same factory makes all Sugar Babies and Charleston Chews. I like those too. Uh, the name of the product is a pun on Sally Benson's Junior Miss, a collection of her stories from the New Yorker, which were adapted by Jerome Chertoroff and Joseph Fields into a successful play. And it was directed by Moss Hart and was on Broadway from 1941 to 43. And hey, look, at, look at this flattered even there. Look. Coconut, that's the next thing I'm reading about. Coconut fruit comes from the coconut palm. Older leaves will break away cleanly from the tree, leaving a smooth trunk. And while a mature and thriving tree can yield up to 75 fruits per year, it's more common to get fewer than 30. A full-size coconut weighs about 3.2 pounds, and coconut palms are cultivated in more than 80 countries of the world with a total nut production of 61 million tons per year. Uh, Bill Wooten, I remember when you climbed up a coconut tree uh, over the Philippines and cut a coconut down. That's still a vision in my head. 
It is one of the most useful trees in the world and is often referred to as the tree of life. Listen to this. It provides food, fuel, cosmetics, folk medicine, and building materials. The inner flesh of the mature seed, as well as the coconut milk extracted from it, forms a regular part of the diets of many people in the tropics or subtropics. Concern about the risk of fatality due to falling coconuts <laughs> led local officials in Queensland, Australia, to remove coconut trees from the beaches in 2002. One newspaper dubbed coconuts the killer fruit. Historical reports of actual death by coconut nonetheless dates back to 1770s. Okay, now you can pause uh, a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm pausing. You're pausing. And I'm did, it get, did it make peaks? It made peaks. Let me see a peak. Get soft a peak. Peaks. Very soft. Yeah. You think it's enough? No, I'll give it a Give it another thing, because I'm afraid maybe that's not a stiff enough peak. Besides, I like seeing you have to do that. Oh, you like me having to <laughs> make a mess. And I got some on your sleeve, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'll just lick it off. Oh. That's okay. Okay, when she does stop, when I come back, I'll tell you some documented deaths from falling coconuts. See, that's soft okay. peaks. That's, that be yes, fine. that's that's fine. That's a that's a soft peak. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to take about uh, a cup of this. It says, well, it's just you're gonna put some of it in. You're this tempering. One. Well, what you're... I'm doing is thinning this out so that it doesn't weigh the weigh the, the stuff, stuff down. down. Yeah. So I'm just uh, gonna mix this in. Okay. And, and we're almost to the point to where you... Oh, get I'm going to get the play. I'm going to get the play. So you continue with your... Okay, I'm continue. Okay, so here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few deaths and injuries that have resulted from falling coconuts and have been the subject of several legal proceedings. In approximately 1777, King Tatui of Mangaea <laughs> in the Cook Islands had a concubine who died after being struck by a falling coconut. In 1833, four people died from falling coconuts in Sri Lanka. On August 15, 2001, in Malaysia, Mamat Kundar, age 59, was killed when a monkey used to harvest coconuts. Oh, my goodness. When a monkey used to harvest coconuts from trees dropped a coconut on his head. I didn't oh. know they used monkeys to harvest coconuts. I didn't either. In but I March that. 2009, 48 year old Jacun in Nahan province of Thailand was killed when a monkey <laughs> well this is another monkey story I know, I when a monkey this. used to harvest coconuts furiously kicked them down to his master hitting him in the head you well know, that tells you don't work with monkeys and coconuts well also it tells you treat your office staff right <laughs> or they might like find some <laughs> coconuts to throw at you <laughs> okay in December 1923 a Newcastle Pennsylvania man was killed while trying to crack open a coconut, oh my goodness, with the butt end of his loaded revolver. Oh my goodness. And they walk among oh, us. Oh, they walk among us. Okay, in 1956, the city of Miami paid $300 to a woman after a coconut fell from a city-owned tree and struck her in the foot. So see, in 1977, a jury in Hawaii awarded $39,000 to a police officer who was struck by a falling coconut. Uh, so... You know, be careful around coconut trees. So uh, that's that that's our that you live in the Midwest. You that's know? our coconut story. Okay, next cookies and cream. That's what's in that jar. A flavor is born. South Dakota State University's claim to cookies and cream ice cream. There wasn't a patent, but there were witnesses. In 1979, Joe Leadham was a dairy science student at South Dakota State University when he helped make the very first batch of cookies and cream ice cream. The idea is credited to Shirley Sees, a manager at the campus dairy plant. He was an institution in the dairy uh, science department. Sees was also a regular dairy products judge and Leadham recalled a story from Sees about a time in the mid 70s when he stopped at an ice cream shop after a day of judging products. He scooped his scoop was served with cookie crumbles on top. Uh, Leadham and Van Trek, who is another one who, I guess, developed this, left their lab in uh, their dairy, left the lab in their dairy white uniforms, hopped onto one of the plant's 
delivery vans and drove to the grocery store where they pretty much cleared out all the Oreo cookies. Let me make sure I've said hi to everybody. Uh, Darlene's here. Hi, Darlene. Oh, hi. Janine's watching. Deb McKim is watching. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So, they, th they was all kind of one of these things that you don't know what's going to taste good until you drop something in your ice cream. Uh, back at the plant, they crushed up the Oreos in a machine called a fruit feeder. We incorporated the cookies into the ice cream, and a new flavor was born. The first batch of cookies and cream ice cream went to the Campus Dairy Bar, and it was an instant hit. And C's used to say it was like a wildfire going through dry grass. Once the word got out, everybody wanted cookies and cream ice cream. And what was that? Probably Terry dropping that stuff off. Oh, downstairs. that could be. Okay, pecans. Crushed up pecans. Pecan, of course, is a species of hickory native to northern Mexico and southern United States. Uh, the tree is cultivated for its seed. Uh, the seed is an edible nut used as a snack and in various recipes such as praline, candy, and pecan pie. The pecan, in various aspects, is included in state symbols of Alabama, Arkansas, California, Oklahoma, and Texas. And then craft caramel bits. Are we almost ready? Yeah, we're really actually. I can finish reading that when you come over here and oh my you goodness, get to, you get to play in the food. Okay, well, you want to read about craft caramel bits? I'll read. That okay, now. do I put stuff in each bowl? Put okay. Here's okay. what you're going to do. I'll show you one because I don't trust. I mean, uh, all right. I can do this. Okay, I'm gonna put just a little bit in the bottom. Okay. I found this from experimenting. At okay, home. and a little bit in the bottom. Okay, just because it makes it easier to mix. Are you going to put all of the little bits in the bottom? If you keep bidding the bottom, I won't have anything to do. No, you're going to be, you'll have plenty to do. Okay. You just put that in. Okay. And then if you, if we have, if we need more, I think we're going to need my little containers over here. Mm -hmm. too. I do too. Yeah, well actually it's That's actually, okay. Do we do it all now? I mean, don't I put something on top? You just, now you're going to go through and just sprinkle okay. like... Let me do the grape nuts. I will. That's my thing. And then you're going to stir it and then add some more stuff and probably add more grape nuts. And you can add them into your liking as to the amount of nuttiness you want to experience. Okay. Pick out what you want to read about craft caramel bits. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, oh. So, okay. So she already did a little bit of the, of the grape nuts. That spoon is kind of... About that much more when I go on top? We'll keep going some more, and then you're going to stir up what you've got in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and read. All right. Let's see. Caramel is so versatile it can even be made in the microwave. With the exact history of caramel, it's unknown. It was recorded that in about 1650, American settlers were making hard candies and kettles. The history of craft caramels, which we're using today, began in 1940, with a team of dedicated workers in Kendallville, Indiana. Stir that up. I already stirred up. Now stir it up some more and then add some more in there. You're going to fill you're, it to the top. You're, you're very testy. That's right. Now what do I do? Add, you can add a few more in. I think it needs some more, some more uh, grape, grape nuts. nuts. Yeah, I think it can use some more grape nuts. Okay. And now add in and then you're going to fill it almost to the top and then stir it. That's a lot of ice cream. Well, in one bowl. No, it's not. Unless you share it with somebody. Now, do I stir it more? Stir it more to where it's nicely mixed. And then put one of those little blue lids on, and I'll run it over to the our deluxe freezer. Why don't we just wait till we got them all Because uh, I'll tell you, you don't want to do that. Okay. No, the little lid. Right? Oh, the little lid. Yeah, right the little here. lid. Okay, one grape nut ice cream. <laughs> Okay, now the most popular is cookies and cream. So I put a little, these are, but these are actually, what's weird is these are like white and yeah. chocolate bits. That's that are crafts, called cookies. It's Hershey's, it's Hershey's thing. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, back in uh, 1940, with a team of the dedicated workers in Kendall, Indiana, making various varieties of America's classic caramels. Kraft baking caramel bits are ready to add to your favorite recipes right out of the bag. 
America's classic caramel bits for baking. These smooth, creamy candies are sure to satisfy your sweet tooth. Pastor Karen was eating some of those before the meeting. I know. So they I may have good. to add I may have to add some more to the jar. Well, you put such a little amount in. Well, it's because you're adding pecans with that one too. Right? Oh, that's yeah. right. That's you know. right. But anyway, is that enough or more high, higher? Add some more of the stuff in there. Probably all of it. Yeah, now stir it up. Oh my goodness. It's hard work. I it know. is hard work. The and thing you're is, pay. you're you're not letting me use my creative juices. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, and it's really great. You can eat some more of those. Those are only 50 calories okay. for uh, 1.5 grams. and cream. Head to the freezer. Heading to the freezer. Okay, now, here we go again. This is, oh, it's stuck to the bottom. Hold on. This is Junior Mints, but she's chopped them up so all the juice inside them has made them stick into one big block. <laughs> Let's now that's, that's the fun one Becky to do. Becky McKenzie's watching. Michelle, your sister. Oh, very good. Uh, and I don't see uh, yes. somebody. Oh boy, this these are gonna be weird because they're just all. We probably ought to just put the whole junior men in there. Okay, because I can't. no you can't no and now now what you're gonna go ahead and throw them in there like that and then you're gonna take your spoon and kind of chop them around while you mix. It's just a real fun thing for you mm -hmm. to do. Start reading. I'll figure this out. Well, that's doubtful. Um, anyway, toppy bits, which we're going to be using. That'll be our last item. The historical annals of candy. Toffee is far from an ancient treat. Most food historians concur the sweet treat treat rose to prominence sometime during the 19th century. England and many other European countries took a particular liking to toffee thanks to their plentiful butter supplies. At any rate, toffee took off in the early 1800s, and we know this for a fact. The Oxford English Dictionary first mentioned the word toffee in 1825. Toffee. Naturally, the word had been in use for some time before making its way into a dictionary, so it is safe to assume that the English and other Europeans were enjoying toffee years before the word first appeared in historical documents. While the origins of toffee do not have you a should put a what? Bill, you should put a banana in the ice cream. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. No bananas. Hey, Kathy, Kathy Cor says she's glad we're not making chocolates. You know, the no. old Lucy and Ethel. <laughs> hey, routine. we ought to do that. We should try that sometime. <laughs> Yeah, we could do that. Okay, I've okay. done the best I can with this vlog. That's fine. And then just put some more filler up to the top and store some now more. Now, this is a bigger bowl. Oh, you used the big Oh, you, I That's what was down here. You had. You, oh, wow, there was two other littler ones. Okay, pour it into this little one. Oh, pour it into this little one here. Fill that so you were the one to fill this up even, and I thought you must have had a reason for it. Yeah, because we're going to put the caramel bits and the pecans in that one. Oh, mm. my, my, my. It's what I get for not paying attention. That's right. That's I wasn't did. watching. I was reading. Okay. Um, while the origins of, origins of toffee do not have a clear historical consensus, the toffee eaten today also has an interesting background in its own right. Interestingly, however, the toffee that is so cherished by many Americans today is not the toffee of English origin, even though the package says English toffee. Uh -huh. I read that on there. This is the toffee she's talking about. Yes. Eaten regularly in America is also called butter crunch. What's the difference? Primarily, the difference rests in the ingredients. Toffee in Britain is made with brown sugar. Let me butt in a, a moment. Yes. Pecans and caramel bits. In the big bowl. Big, big, big bowl. I just dumped that out. Well, that's because you had the mint stuff in there. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Yeah, boy. Oh, my goodness. You are dangerous. I am, and See, I don't think caramel bits and pecans are going to make that much difference in the size of the bowl. Well, yeah, because I want to use them up more so than the others. <laughs> ah. Because you wanted to try those the most. I know. I just like them by themselves. Okay. Here we just go. Just think how much more you like them 
Yeah. Now add pecans. Okay. All nice. right. Stir that. Okay. Traditional British toffee, on the other hand, is not made with nuts. It is fair to ask why, then why the British English toffee persisted while most Americans are enjoying butter crunch. Because the American toffee, or butter crunch as they call it, is made with white granulated sugar instead of the brown sugar. Oh. It could well be that English toffee simply sounded preferable to the ear. Butter crunch just doesn't have that white ring as English toffee does it. Or perhaps businesses simply thought the phrasing, the fancy phrasing of English... Do you want all this in there? Nah, that's fine. That's just how much I ground up. Okay, that one's full enough because we've got enough with the other containers. Right. Okay. We'll okay. All right. Now you can use that big blue lid you tried to use earlier. I need a napkin. I'm not going to lick my finger. So boring. I'm trying to train her. I am not trainable. I'm a monkey. There we go. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and this big lid goes on that. Gosh, I wish we had people to come eat the already frozen ice cream we have. Okay. There we go. All right. Now I have two more things. Are we putting are we putting the coconut separate from the coffee? Yes. Okay. Oh, see this is love that. Like those ground up Heath bars. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Mm. Okay, so a little toffee. Oh. oh. We didn't turn the phone off. Okay. There we go. Good afternoon, Becky. Nice to be served. This is Martina. Alright. She's doing her she's doing her business. See, that might be my favorite to try, even though I, I do want the caramel bits. But, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the lid on this one and let you do the last one. Oh, I'm not thinking. Because I figure I should give you back your job and I'll finish reading huh. what you did. Okay. okay, and I'm going off this way. You're going off? <laughs> I'm going off. Oh, coconut. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle the coconut in there. Wait a minute, that's a oh. Let's see. All right, so you were reading about the toffee bits. Did you finish it? I think I pretty much finished the toffee bits. And you read uh, about all the people killed by coconut. Yeah, most of them. Uh, so, I think we've covered all the toppings. So yeah. there you have the toppings, you have the ice cream, and now all you do then, so with the Eagle Brand milk, vanilla, and whipping cream. And a little bit of salt that I just put in at the very last And I thought. didn't hear about that. I forgot about Okay, that. she forgot to put in a little bit of salt. So now, and then you put this in overnight, or? Four hours. Four hours, however long. It says, if you got a real you know, cold here, here. There, there's a napkin. Don't lick. Don't lick. Okay. <laughs> I thought I did great. Oh, I, scary oh my goodness. We're gonna we're going to if if anybody's just first checking in on us, you know, we've got our <laughs> we've got our regs, our regulars, our fan base. But if someone comes in unbeknownst <laughs> to them how we are, we could be scary. We could be could scary. Be. That's we right. Have a little bit left here. I'm gonna put into this container. Randy, of course, is giving his uh, dissertation. Well, no, not his dissertation. His uh, it, support of this ice cream. This is really great ice cream. The closest to Italian gelato you'll ever have. I don't believe that. But. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very rich. 
I, I'll tell you that. It's very rich ice cream. And, but, and it really does have a nice flavor. But, uh, I think I would have a problem if I made this all the time. I'd probably just eat straight But up with nothing in it, are you able to now, like, would you be able to eat that with, the, with nothing in it? Because no. it's liquid. I know, but well, I, I brought my own stuff. Okay. I'm going to try some of the Junior Mint one. I thought that sounded really good. You, can you have that? As long as I don't eat the mints. Well, how do you eat the junior mint one if you don't eat the mints? I spit them out. And oh, them. for Pete's sakes. I put them in your bowl. No. <laughs> My goodness. I'll make another one of them. You thought this sounded pretty good, didn't you? What? The Oh, that... gosh. Yes, toffee. Yeah. Yes. And how about a little bit of nuts with it? Sure. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. I, I, it sounds great to me. Uh... Sharon Hansen's like, watching. Hi, that Sharon. Reminds me of one of those blizzards from. Yes, yes, it does. Looks like a blizzard. But I'll tell you what, this is a bunch of ice cream. Yes, it is. That's for darn sure. All right, I put a lid on this and put it, these two, and I've got our samples. We'll our samples. Up. Oh gosh, you guys, you're gonna be able to see us. You're gonna be able to see a sample pretty soon. I mean, right now, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so we get these in the freezer. And, okay, you sit down in the chair. I'll move the camera around for okay. you. All right. Here we are. Whoops. Now, that's good. Get, get, get go. me over here because you need more of you to show. Do you need some help? No, I need to get past here oh, okay. without making a mess. Okay. She says she doesn't need help, but I'm going to go over and help her bring the samples over. Well, that's a good one to get into. Because you got too many of them to bring over. Ooh. Okay. There you go. Do we know what these are? I'll tell you. Okay. I'll get there. Look at this. These are all frozen cold. That's how quick it works in the chat, cook, and pray kitchen. Yeah, we're speedy. Hey, I watched a show this morning about, about, uh, that little up. Our freezer is rejecting our food. Well, we need to put them downstairs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, just put them in the refrigerator for now. We'll take them downstairs That's okay. when it's over. Yeah, oh, I think I'm going to take my hat off. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Well, there's some more. There's two more. Oh, my goodness. Now, okay. this is the thing. I think we need to get our own plates. I'm giving you a bowl. Because I will dip a spoon in and take it out and not re dip it. Well, what? <laughs> How much fun is that? <laughs> and oh, and I'm also going to remember to pray. Which is like I gotta get okay. One thing. All right. Your phone's got ice cream on it. It's got or whipped cream. Oh, okay. Same for the floor. Okay. All gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day, as we made ice cream one of the most popular things in the world. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. Uh, ice cream is always something that, that everybody loves. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to uh, see our friends' uh, names on chat and, and know that they're watching. We thank you for Bethel, who uh, has provided us with this space to do our cooking and chatting and praying. And we thank you for this beautiful day. May all the things we do and all the actions we take be in your good name. Amen. Okay, tell okay. me what I'm getting. Okay, I think that I should look. Well, how can you tell? <laughs> Is it cookies and cream? No, we had that one yesterday. Remember we sampled one? Oh, okay. One. This well, one might be the topic because I had a memory. <laughs> 
Then they flew out of the place. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of this and seeing what it is. Okay, this is grape nuts. Okay, got to try that. Let me see. I'll tell you what this is. Junior Mint. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Tastes like it. <laughs> if it's not Junior Mint, then it tastes like another one of our toppings. Okay, yeah, that's probably what it is, because that's the toppy ones there. That's probably coconut. These are pecans. Pecans. Yes. Where's the coconut? Oh. Maybe we don't have a coconut. No, we have a coconut. Did I leave it in the freezer over there? <laughs> I, must have I don't it think in. I could eat more than just a bite of each one anyway. They're pretty, they're pretty rich. The mm. coconut one is still in the freezer over here. I'm thinking I should have just taken a bit from every bowl with this spoon because now I can't dip it back in. Here, have a spoon. Well, get, here, I'll get I'll another get, spoon. I'll, I'll get one. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that right there is the Junior Mints. Okay. This is the grape nut. This oh, hard little lids. <laughs> She's throwing dishes down. Well, they're frozen. Can't get that lid off. Here it comes. Come on! Ah! Okay. I'm not sure what this is. Oh! I think I know. I think this is the uh, caramel bits and nuts. Or pecans. Okay. No, I don't think. Yeah, maybe that. Okay, I gotta leave the lids off for her. She who cannot be named. <laughs> she, well, I liked it when I did the coconut. Oh no, here's pecan. Did you put anything in the pecan one? Did you just do pecans? I just did pecans. Okay. That's just pecans. It's probably in there, but you know, the freezer is rebelling against me. And this one is cookies and cream. And I had some of that yesterday. Yes, you did. Ouch. Oh, I'm getting open. Wow, those lids want to stick on there. Oh, yeah, there's the cookies. Go away. Okay, cookies and cream. All right. Now, yeah. all that. Wow. Now, the That's a is, lot of ice cream. Yeah. I but it's still like good. Yeah. You need to scoot over. You're not in there. There. Ah. Woo! And you know, it's best if you don't let it thaw out. You just put it that way. It kind of gets a little gooshy. Mm. It obviously doesn't have a lot of preservatives in it. Right. It's just, when you need ice cream, and you need it fast, mm. and you don't want to churn, and do all the stuff for the, you know, ice cream, do it like this, put it in the freezer overnight, and it'll be hard and it will be good. Mmm. That is... Did you get enough? I got enough of everything. Okay. Yes. Let me... Mmm, mmm, mmm. The flavors are all good. It's tasty. Good. So now you have ice cream for one of the colder days in our fall. But there'll still be hot days if you if you're only if you're the kind of person that it has to be hot to eat ice cream. We'll still have the hot days. But again, thank you for letting me cook with you or non-cook with you. Hey, you like them better than those chocolate covered bananas? <laughs> uh, you just, I, I like my bananas. Well, I do too, um, but I don't like them. 
Okay. And jumps and big. And Kathy says, "Thank you for laughter." Yes, God, <laughs> thank you for laughter. Uh, hi, Janice Betty. It's good to see your name there. And Randy, hint: if you don't label things, <laughs> I don't need to hear it. I don't understand. Top dress your container with a sprinkle of the contents. Oh, I know. I thought of that, but I decided it would be so boring. Marty, Marty usually doesn't label things. Yeah, I know. Surprise, it's, surprise. It's mystery time at our house a lot of times. <laughs> that's what makes it fun. That's right. I mean, you I know, see, that's what you need to do. Make your ice cream, put flavors in, and, you know, just don't <laughs> label it. And then you just have to put it out there on the table and everybody's just got to dig in and see, you know, what trying oh, to, oh, oh we almost went out there. Uh -huh. Sorry. Marty's still doing her, her liquid thing, so she's eating her clear jello. <laughs> mm. But, oh my goodness. Yeah. You even brought some kind of wafers. I did, I did. I don't think I apple need Apple crisp wafers. We don't have any today, but you'll okay, want Okay, apple crisp wafers will always go good with ice cream. That's the thing. If I hadn't made you eat all that ice cream yesterday. I know. I was just, <laughs> yesterday, I and couldn't you, even eat it. And you ate a Rice Krispie treat before Yes. <laughs> Ooh. So I was nice today and I brought you a sandwich. Yes, yeah, she, she brought it. Since we weren't cooking anything to eat for our meal and Marty had her wee yogurt, she brought me a ham sandwich on, what was the bread? It was a flat, flat pita. Flat pita. Flat pita, flat pita, flat pita. <laughs> do it with some jello in your mouth. I'm not going to do it with jello in my mouth. <clears throat> But I do want to remind everybody that this coming Sunday is World Communion Sunday. So if you're going to be watching us uh, on Facebook Live, then you'll want to make sure you have something for communion close by. And we'll be uh, having uh, some, some, what, three different uh, yeah. countries representative, representative we can't do, of, we can't of do our usual countries. right we can't do our usual thing because we're outside but um, it's such an important Sunday and the one time that as the world uh, we celebrate communion as a faith and that's just what makes it neat uh, so don't forget that's this Sunday also, there was something else I was going to remind you of. Let hmm. me think. Crop walk. Oh, crop walk, of course. And we sent out the the connection to that with our letter that went out. And be watching for a promo on our Facebook page. And we'll be doing a promo of the crop walk, uh, for the crop walk on our Facebook page. And also uh, still coming up is, uh, is our festival of sharing. And we won't know the total that we've given to that. Some of you have already given very generously your gifts for cleaning buckets, but when we have the two quilts that go up for auction in November, then we will know once those are sold how much they brought in. So we'll know our full total to Festival of Sharing. I tell you, it's just so wonderful, the generosity uh, that you all still are showing <clears throat> and we are still able to support our missions and it's just been great. What I did want to ask today, if there are some of you that would like uh, to do a some type of a Bible study uh, or book on an evening where we could Zoom and I would lead that or I could do it on face, Facebook Live, I just need to hear back from some of you if that would be of interest to you. And if it would, then we can start putting that into our different programs and things that, that we're doing so we can stay connected. I know and I know many of you are calling on people and saying hello and just visiting with them. And that's so important. So if it is a matter of getting out the directory, I do know that Marty has now pulled out 
uh, names and updated phone numbers and addresses of people who over the last six to seven months have moved or uh, changed their email or whatever. And she'll be sending that out to you so you will have the most updated addresses and, and numbers that we have. And that way you just go through and just call somebody that you haven't heard about or talked to in a while. And that's the way to stay connected because that's what all this is about. How we stay connected during these times of separation. <clears throat> Yesterday I was on a leadership workshop, how to do leadership in, these time, in this time of pandemic and uncertainty. And it was a very good workshop, and it was from 8.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon, so that's why your letter was, was so short. And there were so many good things to remember that uh, when you're ready to start something in a pandemic or you want to maybe start working on a, a certain thing, it's never a matter of jumping in and just getting it done. You've got to live into what you are trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do and what I've appreciated about Bethel is we've lived into these mm -hmm. tapings and we've learned as we've done them and you all have been patient with that and we have Jeremy who has done so much hard work on getting the outdoor service ready with the instruments and the musicians and the and singers the, and the sound and the sound and that that's a constant you know it's so hard to determine uh especially if if you know jeremy is is the one doing it he has to kind of play more than one role so if someone is interested in learning about sound even when we move uh, the service back into the building before in-person worship just when we start filming back in the building it'd be wonderful to have someone who can run the sound so jeremy can just focus on the uh, you know praise team or whatever he's doing at the time so if you're interested at all just uh, let let us know here in the office or call jeremy and let him know but right now i wanted to read something oh our time goes by too fast what wow. do you do with your book I got it back here. Oh, okay. I got it put back here. Alrighty. And I've probably shared this with you all before, but this is one, a book that I love. This is called Psalms of Lament, and it's by Ann Weems, one of my favorite poets and spiritual guides. Um, the whole thing that started this book was when she lost her 21 year old son this was in st louis and they just celebrated his 21st birthday and as he left the party he was shot and killed um, and i don't know that they ever found uh, the perpetrator but when that happened to her she was a she was a person of faith from the time she was a little baby her her father was a pastor she did everything in the church she loved the church but that caused her such grief and such lament she thought she would never be able to you know come around to the kind of faith that she had at one time <clears throat> and so she started working on this book in fact Walter Brueggemann uh, who is one of our great theologians and scholars of Old Testament who used to teach and was a professor at uh, Eden Seminary for many, many years. Uh, he talked to her and, and said, why don't, you, why don't you use the Psalms and write them as your lament? And that's what she did. She actually went through the Psalms and numbered them and she changed if it wasn't a psalm of lament because a lot of psalms are lament psalms she made it a psalm of lament and what you will notice is in any kind of psalm of lament there's always this blaming and then there's this crying that your faith will never come back and why oh why has this happened and then in the last verses it's like you're going but oh god i know you're there you are my joy, you are my life, whatever. 
So there's a pattern to writing a psalm of lament. So I picked this psalm of lament because I think all of us are kind of in lament during these last few months. And I think we try to find ways to keep ourselves busy and, and to not get too, too down. But sometimes you have to name your lament. And uh, this, is, this is how she did it. Um, and Kathy Korn, she wrote a, what I would call a lament that she sent me, but I didn't get permission from her yet to read that to you. But uh, she may have put it on the Bethel members. If not, maybe she'll do that. But it was, it was beautiful uh, about how one day she just lost it. And then she writes, you know, writes it from her heart. So that's what this is. This is Lament Psalm 21. O oh God, will it never stop? Pain falls on pain like snow on snow. Just when I think I might stand, I'm pushed down again. Is there no end to it? The wound cannot close for it's constantly hit. The infection oozes and I am beginning to think that I will be fevered forever. Is there no hope that I can wake till after? Is there no end to the tears? Only you, O Holy One, can stop the avalanche. Only you can dig beneath the ooze to find me. Only you can wipe my brow and close the wound. Come, O Healer, come and give me hope. For I have trusted in you as those who came before me. We trusted and called upon your name, and you held out your hand and closed our wounds and pulled us to our feet. I know, O oh healer of souls, that you are not far away. I know, O oh physician of the heart, that you will not forsake me, but will stitch my wounds and gently restore my soul. I will gain the strength to serve you once more, for you are my health and my joy. So as we mourn, I think the numbers are now 205,000 who have passed from the COVID-19 and over a million worldwide. Uh, it seems almost insurmountable, insurmountable for us to get over this. But yet, as we lament, we know in our hearts that God is there to hear our cries, to wipe our tears, to hold us, and that we have each other too. And that's, that's one of the most important things, the way we support one another through these times. So be good to yourself, be good to one another. And Marty and I will be back next week with, I don't know what. I'm deciding, trying to decide. I've got a lot of really good stuff to share. She's deciding. So there you go. It should be exciting. Yes. So I will look at, I'll look this over. I see uh, Kathy says a uh, Philippians study. I love Philippians. That would, that would be a good study. So we're going to, we're going to check out. And we're going to do our, oh, i got to get my kazoo. I didn't have it hanging around my neck. Hold on. I'm getting it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if I can, my phone will recognize me. Uh, ah. I don't recognize you. How will your phone recognize you? Some days it doesn't with the mask on. It does not recognize me. <laughs> Pull your hat up so we can see your eyes. There. Okay, let's go. <laughs>